welcome to the membership here on YouTube. I would like to thank you so much for your membership and offer you a paid pattern that is in video format just for you. This is the most requested blanket that we have that people want me to film, but because it's part of a book, I can't just put it out to the general public. So I'm gonna keep it here behind the membership and thank you so much for continuing to be a member with us. This is Into the Light with Jeannie. Now Jeannie uh, really pushed herself. This was originally supposed to be a free pattern back a few years ago, and it was so good that we thought it was book worthy, so we decided to keep it for the book. Now this here is using seven balls of Karen Cake yarn. Okay, Karen Cakes. I'm just gonna be using some random colors today, and today's video is gonna focus on rounds number one through 12. You'll use a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook, and the blanket ends up being 60 by 60 inches. A genie crocheted this for a friend, and after the photo shoot and it came back, it went back and was given to her friend. So we're gonna be doing a lot of fun stuff within this stitch along, and it has the Bavarian stitch, and also some shells, and some puffs, and all that jazz. If you need the written instructions, please purchase our book if you, ha if you don't already have it. There's a link in the more information of this video on how you can do that, and uh, you can find it online or in your retail stores. Our publisher is requesting, though, you try to use your local retail stores so you can get the ISBN number uh, on the more information link as well. And just follow it over go to your local bookstore and place an order because it just helps your local economy by supporting local by doing that so without further ado i'm just going to jump right into this and i'll just dictate the instructions as we go and again if you need the written instructions please purchase our book so this is it and let's start this and using a five and a half millimeter size eye and let's begin this journey Jeannie's original sample was used in the color called Dusted Cream. I'm using Fruit Cobbler. To begin with your slip knot, you're going to chain four. So one, two, three, four, and slip stitch to the beginning chain and yarn over to pull through as a slip stitch to create the ring. Let's now move on to the first round. This beginning section is called the Bavarian stitch and you can grow your Bavarian as big as you want to, but we're only gonna do it for five rounds. We're going to begin by chaining one and we're gonna single crochet into the ring. Go right up over top of that straggler so that you can keep that with the ring so you don't need to sew that in later. To begin then, you are going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five and we're gonna do a four treble together into the ring. So we're gonna wrap the hook twice and going into the ring, pull through, and then pull through two and two and stop. So you wanna do that a total of four times, so you've done it once. So wrap twice into the ring, pull through, pull through two and two and stop. Do it again, pull through, pull through two and two and stop, and one more time. Pull through, pull through two and two and stop. You should be able to count five loops on your hook before you finish. And what you're going to do then is just pull through everything to bring it all together. That's a four together uh, treble crochet and then you are going to chain five and then come back into the ring. So one, two, three, four, five, and coming back into the ring, single crochet. So this was one side. It's actually technically one corner. So we're gonna begin and do that again. So chain five to start. So one, two, three, four, five, and let's do a four treble together wrap twice, pull through two and two and stop. And do it again. Put me on pause if I'm going too quick. So how many loops do you need on the hook before you pull through everything? Hopefully you said five. So now I see the five, yarn over, pull through all of it, and then we chain five to come back to the ring. So one, two, three, four, five, and single crochet back into the ring. This was the second corner. Do it again, chain five. One, two, three, four, 
five and I'll leave the camera going and I'll just stay quiet and just do another four together treble. So there's four sides, so you're going to need four of those. So you got three already. Do it again. So chain five to start. And you do your four treble together. This is the last one, so you have to chain five and slip stitch to the first single crochet that you started with. So one, two, three, four, five, and slip stitch to there. So you just gotta pull things around if you don't see it, it's right there, and slip stitch in, and you should have this combination now. If you went over the yarn tail like I did, then you can just safely cut that out. And it should be good to go forever, and that is your beginning of the center. Let's go on to round number two. So some advice for you at this time. So when Jeannie has stuff like this, sometimes the color just lands exactly in the wrong spot. So don't be afraid to use a different Karen cake in order to keep the same color. Just pull the color from that cake in order to get it. Sometimes it just lands in a really terrible spot. And uh, I, what do I call it? I call it uh, color play, uh, color manipul- oh, uh, doctoring the color, that's what I call it. So for example, if one petal was just a different color because the yarn changed on its own, I would have just grabbed a different ball to start with, but then you can just grab a different ball that has the same color just to finish it to make it look cohesive. Um, the very center of blankets are where people's eyes go, so when the center looks like it's misaligned, it's something that you cannot take your eyes off of. Let's begin round number two. Let's begin round number two. Chain up one and single crochet in the single crochet that you already have here. And you're gonna focus on the tips of the four together stitch. And there's gonna be a lot of stuff going in there. So before you begin, chain one, and then you're going to put in four trebles into the top of the, the four together stitch. So let's start doing that. So just pick the one that you think it is. Just be consistent. If you don't pick the right one, if you're consistent, it won't matter. So you're gonna put in four trebles first. And then you are going to chain one and do another four into the same one. Once that four is in, you're gonna chain one again and do another four. There's a lot going on this one stitch. Okay, so you have really three groups of four if you wanna think about it like that. Before you finish that, chain one, and you are going to single crochet into the next single that's here. And this will pull that round as a big round circle like that. Dog hair is free today. So what you're gonna do is chain one again, top of your four together treble, you'll put in four trebles, chain one, four trebles, chain one, four trebles, and then chain one and single crochet into the next single. And I need you to do this all the way around and I'll be right back in a moment. This is round number two. So I'm coming all the way around. Notice how the color just changed here. So my point with Jeannie was talking about that if you if that really bothers you, you would wanna use a secondary ball, pulling the same color and then just finishing it off so that you would have a solid um, color in that particular round. So hopefully that makes sense. 
So I'm not going to explain that any further. So what we have to do then is that we have to fasten this off at this point. So we have to um, finish and we need to start at a new location. So we're going to just cut this yarn and I'll show you just one time on this whole tutorial on how to weave in the ends. I'd recommend that you do that. Um, if you weave it in with your crochet hook, things fall out. So put it onto a tapestry needle and just because it's this color, I don't want to weave here because it's going to get noticed. So just stay within the, uh, the, the stitch work itself. If you go between the strands, nothing really stays. But if you kind of use your, your tapestry needle and break up the plies itself, even the plies that, of the yarn that you were just doing that with, it really helps it to secure it. Now, some people argue it, that it still falls out. I think you can use fabric glue as well. I've never done it, but I think that's possible to do that, just to tap it with a little bit of glue just in case that bothers you as well. So let's continue to round number three. Let's start round number three. The cat may jump up on during this segment. She's looking at me on the floor. So what I want you to do is that I want you to find the one chain, one space that is right here. Okay, so you see that you have the groups of the three groups and you're gonna get the first chain one space there. Join with the standing single crochet. So just have it on your hook already going in pull through and then pull through the two. That's a standing single crochet. So the corners are treated differently from the ones that it will be sinking it down in. So just always keep that in mind. So as you begin, you need to uh, do a chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Starting in this grouping of four, which is the very corner, is that you're gonna do a four together back post our uh, treble. So we're going to wrap the hook and you're going to come in from behind and just grab it from the back post. So pull through, pull through two and two and stop. Don't finish. And then do the other three the same way. So wrap twice, back post in the next one, pull through, pull through two and two and stop. And again, And one more time. It's a four together using the entire grouping of four. Once you have the four done, you'll have five loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the five. And now you're going to chain five again. So one, two, three, four, five. And you want to come into this one right here. Okay, it's still part of, like, just think of it as the corner. And it's a single crochet right around the space. Okay, that's how it looks. So now we have to fill in this indentation with a new set, and this is gonna be a big one. Okay, so here we go. So in order to start, you have to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. We're now going to do a treble eight together with the back posts, okay? So we're going to use this grouping of four and then this grouping of four, ignore what's in the middle. So start and start doing your trebles in the back post and start doing those first set of four. Okay, you're not finishing that stitch, so you're collecting them all together. So if you, when you have this done, there should be nine loops on your hook. So the first four have been collected. Now jump immediately to this next four before the next chain one space right here. So start. I didn't finish that one. So I'm gonna start. So you'll run out of stitches anyway, but knowing that there's nine to be on your hook may help you to know that. Okay, so I've run out of stitches before I hit this next chain one space. There should be nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you're confident that you collected all four and all four, then you don't need to count that. So then just yarn over, pull through everything. And now you're going to chain a total of five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then single crochet into the next chain one space. 
and then you're gonna start a new corner just how you started. So chain five, so one, two, three, four, five. And then it's a corner, so you're only gonna do the, cor uh, the corner four. As a four together, back post, treble. So there's five loops on the hook. So pull through all five and then chain five to come back down. So one, two, three, four, five, and single crochet into the next single crochet space. So you're gonna continue around in the same manner. So then you'll chain five, five and then you'll put the eight together. So this grouping of four, this grouping of four, and then once that's together, chain five, single into the next chain one space here, do your corner like I just showed you and etc. and do this all the way around for round number three. I'm coming up around on number three and then one, two, three, four, five. I already started with a single crochet and that's where I'm gonna slip stitch and conclude that round. Okay, so lots of texture happening and we're moving on to round number four next. Okay, let's start round number four. So in order to make the Bavarian um, circle, you, you have to do half of it first and then the other half is in the next round. So as we begin this, we're gonna just start and we are going to chain up one and single crochet into the first single crochet. Now, the top where everything comes together, the four together, you were going to put in a corner like you did here. So you'll start off with four trebles first and then We'll be chaining one after that. So chain one, so that's one of the groups of three that you need. So you'll do another group of four trebles. Can you do Bavarian stitch with double crochet? Absolutely. It just makes it tighter and it won't grow as fast. So the trebles are a great solution for that. Once you have the next grouping of four, chain one and then put four more trebles in. The Catherine wheel stitch, which is similar to this, is my favorite stitch in the whole wide world. I just like how it, I just always loved the circular looks to it. To it. So, now we're going to just single crochet here so we don't have to chain one like we did before when we were doing the corners when we were doing it down here okay so you can see that this grouping of four this four this four and this four gives a total count of 16 and completes the circle so when you do the overside of of the sections in the middle then what's going to happen is you have one section two three and four and that's what you're going to finish so you'll start off in the middle here and put in four trebles first. Then chain one. And the reason why you're doing a chain one is that you're giving a space to anchor down later. And then you'll do another grouping of four. And this will complete the overside of that Bavarian circle. So just think of your Bavarian circles are made up 16 stitches in the round. And so with this grouping of four, this one, this one, and this one times four equals 16. So then single into the next single. So you're gonna start the corner just how I showed you before. So you're just gonna put in your three, or sorry, your four trebles, chain one, four trebles, chain one, four trebles, single here, and then doing the overside of the ones in the middle. Please do this all the way around for round number four. Coming around to number four, and I'm just gonna slip stitch to the first, and you need to get rid of this yarn. I've already actually did an outtake, so I've already cut my yarn. And get that done, weave in your ends, and we're gonna begin number five. Number five is gonna get us back to being a full square again so that we can continue along. We'll be revisiting the Bavarian stitch again in the future, but we have to get ourselves flat. So we have to do the underside of the Bavarian in order to do that. And that's something that you already know, but I'll show you anyway. Let's begin number five. So to begin again, you're gonna come into the chain one space that is part of the corner on this side right there, and you'll do a standing single crochet. It's what you already know. 
The only difference now is that there's more indentations. There was only one last time. There's going to be two before the corner. So to start, you're going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then you'll do your four together back post treble using the corner. Okay, and once you get those, pull through and then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to single crochet into this chain one space. Now, we have to do the underside. So there's gonna be two before you can do a corner. So you're gonna immediately start and you need to chain five before you begin. So one, two, three, four, five. And do eight together, back post double crochet, featuring this four and this four. So you're bringing the two circles together to create the underside. So again, you can continue to grow out Bavarian as big as you want to. This pattern, um, we're gonna be switching over to something different in the next portion of this in today's tutorial. And we need to have this fifth one in here in order to do that. A great question people may have, can you do Bavarian with double crochets? Absolutely you can, it'll be tighter and that might be something that is more desirable, so it takes a while to grow. Um, the Bavarian stitch, because it's using a back post, um, always is a yarn pig, and so people get upset about that too. But it's all part of the look, and you know what? Who's to say, right? Just enjoy your creativity while you have it. So you do this grouping of four, and so now you have nine stitches on your hook. So pull through all nine, and then chain five. So one, two, three, four, five, and then single into the top of this one here. So that was one underside. So then you'll want to do another underside. So chain five and put in the next group of eight together, back close to uh, trebles. I always find it kind of funny online. People want blankets that are not yarn pigs, but they love the texture. And so sometimes it's just what it is, right? You just gotta sacrifice the yarn for it if you really love it much. Um, it's, just part of, it's just part of the nature of the beast, I suppose. It's like uh, painting your entire house with just one uh, pail of paint. It's really difficult to do. I'm, I'm losing my way a little bit. Let me just backtrack. When in doubt, pull out. I was thinking about actually painting my office here in my home studio, but Dana said no. And honestly, it's probably because I was bored. Okay, so we got nine again, so you're gonna pull through and then chain fives. So one, two, three, four, five, and then single crochet to the next space. And then you do your corner again, so chain five, and then put your four treble back post in, chain five, single into the next chain one space, and do your undersides and etc. And you do this all the way around for round number five. I'll see you at the end of the round. So I'm coming up on number five, and I'm just going to slip stitch to here. Now this is the end of the line for the Bavarian at this time, and so we want to fasten off, weave in your ends. Uh, people may ask me, what does the back look like? I haven't woven in all my ends, but you can see the back is pretty flat, just like this. So if you did a Catherine wheel stitch example without doing the back, it would, uh, like the back post, it would look like that. So this is more defined. So let's get rid of this yarn here, and we're going to start off in a corner and begin the next part, and we're gonna phase ourselves into a complete going around and around like you normally would do. So let's do that next, number six. So let's begin and do number six. Now, since uh, doing the book, we actually know how to make diagrams a lot better than we did back in 2019. And so um, the diagram is not so clear in this section, but I will show you what it is. So you're gonna come right to a corner where the four come together and you're going to join 
and you're going to chain three. So one, two, three, and then in the same one, put in another double crochet. This is so easy, it's not even funny. So each one of these chain five spaces are each gonna get four double crochets. You don't have to worry about the stitches of the single crochets that attach them. And this is gonna equally space out the stitches itself on its own. Okay, so even though it's kind of grouping, it will pull together. So jump to the next chain five space and put in four double crochets. And I'll see you in the first corner in a moment just to show you how to turn. As we come up to the first corner, it'll be next. See, it's nice and easy just looking for those chain five spaces. And once you get this grouping of four in, you're gonna come right to the corner where all of them come together. And you're gonna do your corner of two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, and then start another side. So when you come back around on this, you'll be finishing that corner when you get there. So immediately jump to the next chain five space and slam in your four double crochets in each and go all the way around in the same formation. And I'll be right back in a moment. When you come back around, you're gonna finish that corner. And Jeannie does a, a technique that I really like. It's called the half double crochet join. So instead of having a corner that starts off lopsided, she does a half double crochet into the top of the first chain three and then just finishes it that way so that you're right in the exact corner. So that was round number six. Let's move on to round number seven. Round number seven. The corners on round number seven will be a one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. So we're going to begin chain one and single crochet in and we'll finish that corner on the way around. In each one of these, you're going to apply a single crochet in the back post. And this will provide a, a ring of texture. Okay, so back post only, and a single crochet, and again, as I said, the corners will be one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet, and this single crochet round that we're about to do will evenly space out these um, double crochets that are just in resting in the spots, or in the spaces. So please do this around. This is round number seven. Coming around number seven, I have to finish the corner, so I just single crochet right in the corner, and again, another half double crochet join to the first single crochet that you started with. So you can see it kind of framed it beautifully and we're now moving on to number eight. Number eight, nice simple one, just chain up one and single crochet in the same one. The corners on this round will be one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. You're going to slam in a single crochet into each stitch on its own, so not no more back posts. And the first stitch is right here. A lot of people think that chain one is a stitch, and so they accidentally throw in an extra stitch. So make sure that it's just above the one that is got the, the legs, okay? And so just one single crochet in each stitch, corners, one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. Please do this around for number eight. So I'm coming up to the end of number eight here, and I'm just gonna single crochet in the final corner, and then join it with a half double crochet joint. And now we're going to begin and we're going to do slanted shells for two rounds. They're both done slightly different, so you'll have to watch both of them if you're interested. And let's begin number nine. So let's begin number nine. You're gonna chain three, counts as your first double crochet, and in the same corner, put in a double crochet. Now, as you start this round and every side is gonna start the same way and it's gonna finish the same way, you're gonna skip the first two. So one and two, and remember the ones that the legs, that's the first one. So the chain one, it always looks like a stitch, but it's not. So you're gonna skip one and two, go to the third, and you'll put in three double crochets into the same one. So one, two, and three. And then you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then single crochet into the same one where the grouping of three is already in. So now you're gonna start again. You're gonna skip now three, one, two, three, go to the fourth, and this will be the same repeat then going all the way to the next corner. So you'll put in your three double crochets first, chain three, and single crochet in the same one out of there. So we'll do this to the first corner and I will be back in a moment. So one, two, three, skip, and then do your another slanted shelf, and I'll show you how to uh, finish up one side, turn the corner and restart, and then you can do the rest of it on your own. 
As you approach a corner, any corner in this round, you're going to skip three. So one, two, three. It's the second one before the corner that you end up on anyway because it's keeping count. And so the, you'll approach into the corner with this first chain three and single crochet back in. And now you can officially then begin your corner. So jump right to the corner space and it will be two double crochet. One and two chain two and then two more double crochet and to turn. So as you start another round, okay, you're going to skip only two. So one, two, go to the third and begin the slanted shells again. And the when you approach the next corner, it's the same thing that I just showed you. And I'll see you at the end of the round in just a moment. Coming around to number nine, I've got my last uh, slanted shell in there and I'm going to finish my corner. Just jump right to it and put in two double crochet with a half double crochet join. And let's talk about number 10 next. Number 10. Now the diagram is not so clear in the instructions, but um, it's there, it's just not as pointing as it should be. So we're gonna chain three. Again, we've learned over the years. So, and then double crochet back in. The corners on this one though are not aligned with each other in the sense that there is actually gonna be three double crochets, chain two, two double crochets whenever you complete a corner. So because this is the second half in the corner, there's only two, but we'll cover that when we get over here. Now, the first two stitches are going to be a double crochet. And you can see that it's kind of misaligned a bit in the, in the diagram there, but that's what it is. And then what you need to do is that you need to look to, you know, this chain three here, look to that space and you're gonna pl apply another, um, um, opposite slanted shell. So you're going to slip stitch first, chain three, and then put in three double crochets in there. So you see it's done backwards. One, two, and three. Then you come to the next one right here, the next chain three space, just pull on over, slip stitch, chain three, and in the same spot, put in three double crochet. So do this across and I will meet you close to the uh, turn just to verify because it's slightly different when you get there. Okay, so just over, chain three, and three double crochet in these spaces. So I'm coming close up to the next corner and I'm doing my slanted shells opposite to what I did in the round below. and I'm gonna come right here and here's the corner. So I'm going to immediately start right in the corner after this one is done and I'm going to apply then three double crochets. So one, two, and three, then turn. So you're then gonna chain two and then only put two double crochet in there. So you see the corners are lopsided so that it keeps the stitch count proper. So when you start the next side, you just double crochet the next two and then begin, okay, by just pulling over, slip stitching, chain three, and three double crochet again. And you'll do that same principle going all the way around for round number 10. I'll be right back. So as I finish the last shell coming around here on round number 10, um, I'm going to jump right into the corner. Remember that there's three double crochets to start it and then I'm going to join with a half double crochet join and that will conclude then round number 10. Now round number 11 is going to be interesting because we need to get ourselves back to a flat edge and yet we have all these jigsaw kind of stuff happening so let's begin that next. So every good boy deserves fudge it has nothing to do with this tutorial but every stitch gets a stitch. I guess that's my roundabout way of saying it. So what we have to do is that the chain one space still is a stitch and then the three others are still a stitch. So each, each one of these jigsaws is four stitches. So we need to get ourselves to a flat edge. So the ones that are closest down towards you are gonna be the longest stitch with double crochet, the next one's a half double crochet, and then the space and the first one is a single to keep it nice and flat. So as we begin this, we're going to start off and we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. 
and then in the same corner, put in one double crochet. So there's gonna be four double crochets in a row. You can see them right below. And so you're gonna do the four in a row before we start doing the fun stuff. So one, two, three, and four. And do you see how this is jumping up? That's exactly what we're trying to compensate because it's higher to the top of this one. We need to make that space as a single crochet. See, it keeps it equal. The next one is a single, and you see the other ones are starting to sink. So the next one is gonna be a half double crochet because it's going lower. And then the next one is a double crochet. So you can see that it compensates for the height of the stitches. So you start a new shell, start in the space. It's a single, the next one is a single, and then it starts to sink again. So we have to get longer, so it's gonna be half double crochet to get longer and then the longest one is a double. So go across and I'll meet you close to the end of the uh, turning corner and you will see that this will flatten it off quite nicely. And I'll be right back. So I have one more shell in before the corner. So the first space will be a single, the next one is a single and then it starts to dip. So half and double. Now the stitches leaning into the corner here there's gonna be three that you see. So you're, each one of these three will have a double crochet. And then your corners will be the same for all of the sides, which will be two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So I'll show you how to restart another round, or uh, sorry, another side. So just turn your work after that's done. So the first four, you can see them. So they'll each be a double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, and then you got your jigsaw uh, slanted shells. So the space will be a single, a single, and then it starts to dip. So we're gonna compensate with a half. And then the other one, then the last one is the biggest dip. So that's a double. And then you're back at the top again. So this space is single, single, half, and double and you will see that this will give it a nice flat edge. Please do this all the way around. This is round number 11. So I'm coming around to number 11. The final corner will have two double crochets in it and we'll do a half double crochet join to the top of the first chain three. We're gonna do one more round for today's video and the next uh, set of videos will continue this in the future. And we're going to begin by starting. Number 12 is the final for this, so it's gonna be chain three and double crochet into the same. Corners will be two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Each stitch is just gonna be a double crochet until you hit the next corner, turn your corner, and meet me at the end of this round. This is round number 12. So just finishing up round number 12 and then just putting two double crochet into the final corner and then a half double crochet join. And this is where this tutorial today will stop and then I'll pick you up in another tutorial in the future. And it's really helpful to have the book on the next part of this. Um, we're going to be doing um, uh, a really kind of a neat section of making the puff stitches. Um, it's called the popcorn section. It's what really is eye catching. Um, once, if you've been following my, me in recent tutorials, I just do the first part of the section and then I come back and I do the last part instead of going all the way around helps me speed up so I can do a lot more tutorial work um, so it would be very helpful for you to have the book if you don't already have it but I will give you the verbal instructions and hopefully get it right for you so we'll continue next time as we continue into the light with Jeannie we'll see you again real soon bye bye